Hi everybody, welcome back to the Daily Lesson with Little Kids Rock. My name is Warren and we're going to continue looking at guitar tablature. Uh, as you remember from the last lesson uh, with this graphic, the lines in tablature represent the guitar strings and the numbers represent the guitar frets. So today we're going to go through a lot of great riffs, um, something like this. And uh, maybe something like this. So here we go. Uh, for the rest of this lesson, uh, you're going to be looking just at the guitar neck uh, to better aid you in seeing what I'm playing as I talk you through some of these riffs. Uh, if you want, you can continue to look at the riffs that I'm going to be looking at uh, just by noting them in the top corner of your screen. Okay, here we are. For the first tab that we're going to be checking out today, we're going to be looking at Dark Horse by Katy Perry. Now this is a great easy line for you and your students to learn right off the bat. Now as you can see from this graphic, we start off at fret 9 on the high E string. That's the string closest to the ground, So, but in guitar tablature, remember that's the highest line. So as you can see, we have 9s, 8s, and 6s. An important thing to note with this tab is that you're going to want to cent center your hand in the best spot possible. In this case, your first finger should be over the 6th fret and your pinky should be over the ninth. So that way you don't have to move too much. So you can go nine, 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 eight, eight, six, six, nine, 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 eight, eight, six, six. Now you have an option when you're going to the six on the high E string and then the six on the B string, you can bar those two, which means pressing down your first finger on both strings. Or if you're a little new to this, you can hop up with your first finger, but it becomes a little trickier, but here we go. So that was Dark Horse by Katy Perry. Now let's check out an oldie but goodie, Dazed and Confused by Led Zeppelin. Now the great part about this tab is that we need to remember that same thing. We need to get our hand position in the right spot. So if you look at the numbers, you've got 10s, 9s, 8s, and 7s. So the best thing to do here is put your first finger around the 7th fret, and then your pinky will line up on the 10th fret. In this case, if you're unsure about the rhythm, make sure you take a listen to the song before playing the tab. It'll clue you in to where to play those open strings and how to get the rhythm right. So in this case, I'm doing a very steady walk down and then switching strings. So it's 10, 9, 8, 7, oh, 10, 9, 8, 7, repeat it, oh, 10, 9, 8, 7. Oh, 10, 9, 8, 7. So another great riff to kind of line up your hand position and also get you and your students comfortable with using some of those fingers that they may not be too comfortable with, like your third finger or your fourth finger, the ring and the pinky. So this next tab is another great one. It's 25 or 624 by the classic band Chicago. So we're going to take a look here. So in this case, you can see from this graphic that we have fives, threes, twos, and ones. So we're going to have to do a little bit of hand position switching. It sounds and looks like this. And 
and this is a great tab to get your students also used to playing on that low E string. So if you notice in the tab, that low E string is actually on the lowest line. So you can think low E is in pitch and low is in the lowest line. So here we go again. Now if you notice, instead of doing five, three, two, one, I found it a bit easier to go five with my pinky, two with my middle, one or two with my first finger, and then shift down to that first fret with the first finger. Because if we're trying to stretch out too much, that's not gonna be good for anybody's hand. And remember, when you're talking to your students, they shouldn't anchor their hands anywhere. It should always be moving so that you're not building up tension. Now, there's a multitude of different ways you can play it. If you wanted, you could do a one finger walk down if your students aren't as comfortable using all their fingers. And what's great about this, you could play here as well. And moving on, let's get a little more complicated. We're gonna go over to some Nirvana here. Now this is a classic rock song. Um, notable uh, in this tab example are a few things that I think can really help us out. As you can see, this is a great example even in tab to teach your students about reading half note rests and eighth note rests. As you can see, this musical example comes in on the end of beat three as a bit of a pickup. Now, as you can see, the, we have a lot of O's and ones and twos in this. So it's not too hard for your fingers, but you wanna watch out for the times where you'd be playing and the notes sound very separated or very staccato. So you don't want to sound like this. Now, in order to get away from that, what we can do is we can leave some of our fingers pressed down while we play some of those open strings. So for instance, I'm gonna leave that finger there while I play the fifth string open. And now I'm gonna leave this finger here while I play the sixth string open. And repeat. Oh, one, two, oh, two, oh, two, two, one, oh, two, oh, oh. Now, I always love this song because it's got that very familiar and uh, very cool little line that starts it off. Now, for a great assignment for you, if you want to take on a little bit of a challenge, this song can be played, this riff, I mean, can be played in a number of different positions on the guitar. So one thing that you can do for a little bit of a, a tab assignment is take this riff, but start it in a different octave. So this riff starts off on this lowest E string, right here, down below, on the bottom line. But what you could do is try starting it off on the second fret of the fourth string, and See if you can tab that out. Now, the numbers are gonna be a little different, but the notes will sound the same. So, it starts off here and goes. There are the first three notes to give you a little bit of a hint. Now, if you wanna get even more creative, you can jump up to here, the fifth fret. And if you wanna get super creative, come on up to 12. But that one's pretty tr tricky. If you want, you can also use some open strings. 
Now, moving on. So that's that great riff from Nirvana's Come As You Are. Oh, and also a quick note, you can talk to your students if they're unfamiliar about what repeat signs look like. Uh, you have two right there in that example. So let's move on to the famous riff from Seven Nation Army. Now, a little bit of a tip for this one, because we're jumping around on that single string for a lot of the time, we really need to be uh, conscious about how to shift our hand position. So after we go 7, 7, 10, 7, what we want to do is shift our whole hand down and get our pinky on the fifth fret so that 5, 3, and 2 become relatively easy. So one more time, it's... Now for your second tab assignment, here's a great one. Start off on the same first four notes, but is there another place that you can play five, three, and two to make it a little easier on your hand? I'll give you a little bit of a hint. You might have to re you're gonna have to rewrite some of the numbers, but your hand position shouldn't have to move too far from Those first four notes are going to stay the same, but see if you can figure out a much easier way to play those last three notes. Now, for our last tab example, we're going to play a great riff from Uptown Funk from Bruno Mars. Now, this example is another great one to talk to your students uh, about how we need to listen to these tunes a little bit before we start playing them to get a feel for them. If we played them very straight, uh, as the music notation, the traditional music notation suggests, it's going to be a little tough to get that good groovy funky feel. <laughs> So what you can see is I've positioned my hand in the most easiest spot. So I have my first finger hovering over the eighth fret. Now what's great about this is that I can use my third finger on the sixth string and my fourth finger on the fifth for the tens so that I don't have to bar there. Now you run into a little bit uh, of a similar issue from what we were chatting with before when we were talking about Dark Horse you may want to bar on the 8th fret these top or these lowest two strings but if that becomes a little tricky you can jump around with your first finger so to demonstrate 10 10 10 8 10 10 8 8 10 10 10 8 10 10 8 8 10 and here it is with the bar 10 10, 10, 8, 10, 10, 8, 8, 10. It definitely makes it a little easier for me, but I'm more comfortable barring. Uh, and barring these two low strings might be a little bit of a, a challenge for some earlier players. So uh, in this case, too, I want to hold out some of those notes as much as I can uh, throughout the last section of that riff. So it's 10, 10, 10, 8, 10, 10, 8, 8, 10. Eight, ten. So you want to make sure that you're trying to get those notes to be to sound as connected as possible as opposed to something like this. When we're able to leave our fingers down for the longest amount of time possible, it gets a nice smooth sound. So I hope 
that uh, these tabs, these six guitar tabs, have been helpful to you with some of the tricks that we talked about. Just as a refresher, uh, remember the lines represent the strings on the guitar and the numbers correspond to the frets. So remember that even though we know where to place our fingers, it's important to think and be conscious about what fingers we want to use and how we want to move those fingers. Because if we play Bruno Mars with just one finger or a mixture of wrong fingers, it's going to make it a lot trickier. So take a look at the tabs, investigate where the best place you should put your fingers, uh, and then I uh, hope you have a lot of fun with these six great riffs. Thanks so much. See you next time.